Good morning. Good morning. I'm happy to be with you, and what a crowd, my goodness. This is, this is great. I, I, usually 5 o'clock is uh, more packed, but this is great. If um, you're with a family grouping, you might want to share a wafer with them, okay? We're not, we're, we're, we counted and then we counted again, but your family might want to do it. You don't need to do it cross families, but if you get up here and it looks slim, share, okay? <laughs> and this says welcome and announcements, and I don't have any announcements. Terry, do you have announcements? Uh, no, I do not. Oh, really? Well, blood drive's coming up, but not until December. I figured there's always something to do with blood with Terry. Um, Chris, do you have any announcements? Um, the end of October, I think the 27th, we are having a brown bag lunch. You need to reserve a spot, so you need to call the office. Brown bag, call the office. And if Laura's not hiding away studying, you'll get her on the phone. But otherwise, you can leave a message, and things are rolling along smoothly. It's all good. Well, following our worship time, on, which I realize I've got a time me. limit. I Mary. can only talk for eight minutes. Mary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, can I announce one, too? Um, so we have a drive-in 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 November. You should have seen that in your beacon, but anybody in the congregation is also welcome to attend. And we're handing out to food pantry folks, and um, it's on November 17th, like 5 to 6, I don't know. The time's in the beacon. But all you have to do is call into the office and tell me how many you want. Pastor Dean's cooking. He's an awesome cook. If you haven't had his food before, which probably everyone has. And uh, it's meat and veggie lasagna. Okay, okay, so keep checking the beacon and your emails or however that goes along, whether it's hard or electronic or something. Keep checking for all the details. Anybody else? All right. <clears throat> of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for our cornerstone in Jesus. Give us hearts, minds, and hands that will imitate his compassion and love for your creation 
as we share your gracious love with others. In your name we pray. Amen. Our Gospel this morning is from Matthew in the 21st chapter. Jesus said to the people, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed one, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So he seized them, they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to these tenants, Jesus asked. They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death, and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded Jesus as a prophet. This is the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Please join me in prayer. God, in your goodness, you give us imaginations. You give us eyes to see this beautiful world. You give us hearts that can connect with each other and hearts that can change in how we view this world. Thank you for the stories that give us the energy to do this. We pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth are acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. Amen. Well, Dean had asked me for this October weekend a long time ago so they could, he could join his family in celebrating grandson Huck's, Huck's birthday. So that's how I got here. And then the whole plan developed um, that I connected with Laura about to do some looking and some continuing study of anti-racism and how that is working here with individuals and how the institutions need to be looking at rethinking racist structures. Well, it's interesting that, I don't know if you planned this, Laura, but it landed on the weekend of this gospel, Jesus is the cornerstone. That's the whole tone of the story. Jesus is the foundation. We want to order organize, lay out how we are as community, how we are as church, how Christians see this nation. We want to lay that out in the structure of Jesus' justice, of Jesus' 
love for all people and community that is included, inclusive. That's the foundation that we are in as God's people. Well, it brought me back to a workshop that I went to when I first went to seminary, 1980s. Oops, sorry for the people who weren't born yet or for, you know, still figuring out how to use a spoon. But anyway, that's what it was. It was a workshop, about 20 or 30 people, and a professor, a teacher's name was Ricky. We were gathered in a small, kind of claustrophobic room, and the idea of this whole workshop was unlearning racism. It was examining racism and how we were affected and affecting this separation. Well, the first thing that Ricky did was say, um, I'm gonna talk, and after I'm done talking, then, then you all can talk. But I'm going to talk right now. I'm going to give you some um, theory. And I don't want anybody to ask questions. I don't want hands up. I, I'm just going to talk. Well, I could feel people not be happy about this. You know, these were the academic types who knew a lot. <laughs> and they wanted to put their hands up and, and show they knew a lot. But she said, we're not doing that right now. Well, she talked, and frankly, I can't remember what she told us, but she talked for, for a goodly amount of time, and I could just feel people getting more and more agitated, more and more agitated. And she said, okay now, I'm done, and I want you to tell the person next to you what I just said. Tell them everything I just said. And we did that, then we reversed, and we went back and forth, so that in dyads, we were sharing what Ricky had taught us, had told us. She said, now, everybody in this room has the same amount of knowledge. No one is smarter than anybody else. And maybe you've been in situations like that in classes or workshops or discussions where the first people who speak and put their hand up are, are labeled as the smartest. That's the one who really knows what's going on. And now they have a relationship with the instructor or the professor, and the rest of the people just aren't quite up there. That's how I always felt. I thought, well, I'll just write in my notes. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like, put my hand up right away and stuff. She said, there's no gradation in here. Everybody has the same amount, and we are all equal in our learning and unlearning of racism. That just stuck with me so, so clearly. Obviously, it was decades ago. And her way that she ordered the class, the foundation that she set up for all of us to be searchers and learners was just really refreshing and exciting to me, that she would set that tone. She would lay that foundation. Well, community, church, we can lay that same foundation. There are some people who are smarter, holier, bring more casseroles or whatever. We are all in the same community together. And then she proceeded on with other conversations and other learnings that she gave us. And this one stuck with me too. And I know that um, I have used this example before here at Lakeview in other times that I've spoken in the last 20 years. Um, and I will give an extra communion wafer to anybody who remembers that I did this, okay? I, so far, I said that at other two services and I haven't given out any extra wafers. So, but she said to us, now, Think back in your imagination. When was the first time you had a racist thought? When was the first time you thought, I'm better than someone else because of my skin color, because of my nationality, because of my language? When was the first time you had that thought? Some of you don't have to go back as far as other people. But I remembered, I was about six or seven years old, and it was 
May. It was the end of the school year, and we were going on our big party, our big trip. And I lived in a little town outside of St. Paul, Piper Lake, Bald Eagle, and we were going into Lake Como to the amusement park, and it was very exciting. End of the school year, lots of fun. We took the, the school bus, we were just so excited, and they had a merry-go-round. And I was in line with other kids from my school and schools from all over to get onto the merry-go-round. Just standing there in that line. And in front of me, a kid pushed in to get in line ahead of me. I didn't know this kid. And the child happened to be African-American. He happened to have black skin. And I was mad because he pushed in ahead of me. But I thought to myself, in my little six or seven year old mind, oh, look how pushy he is. They are all alike. What? When I think back about it now, it's so vivid to me. And where did I get that idea? Who told me something like that? Who, who planted that in my little brain? We didn't use language that was disparaging of other races at my dinner table. My family didn't talk like that. Where did I get that idea that some people are not as good as me and some people are all alike? They all do things alike. Where did I get that? And then our teacher said, Forgive the person who gave you that idea. Forgive the person who planted that thought, that judgmental, that racist thought in your head. Forgive that person. And then forgive yourself for having that thought, for harboring that idea of discrimination and operating in whatever way you operated out of that. Forgive yourself. Because part of unlearning racism is learning to forgive. It's learning to forgive each other, to forgive ourselves, to forgive the person who taught you that story or lived out of that operating in the world. Forgive them. Now we talk about institutional racism, how the tenets of division and discrimination are so far down deep in us, in the church, in country, in the way that we operate our voting, the way that we operate in the police sometimes. That's, we talk about institutional racism, and that's important, and so is that forgiving, forgiving of ourselves and working to start anew in that. Well, I encourage you, we got lots of seats, we got lots of room. Bring that person, whoever it was, whatever that situation was, bring them into this worship space so that as God's people, we can come together, whoever, however we are, and know that God's presence and God's blessing is on this whole community. And now usually we'd, we'd have a hymn, but we don't. So we'll continue with our prayer. Let us pray, God. May your church be a people who put faith into action as we strive to lift up the kingdom of heaven on earth right now. Give us hearts that desire justice and equality for all. Guide us to use the tools of compassion, forgiveness, and love as we combat racism and all other forms of human oppression. We pray for the safety of all those who come to this nation to find security and protection. Help us to remember that no one is illegal in your eyes. 
Thank you for the gift of science and technology and for all those people who are using it to develop ways to combat the coronavirus. Give us wisdom to take the precautions that will slow the spread. We pray for an end to gun violence and lift to you all those impacted by the recent shooting in Salem, Oregon. We give thanks for all the firefighters and disaster relief workers responding to wildfires and hurricanes, especially I remember Andy, firefighter in California. Give comfort to all who grieve and lay your healing spirit on Ethel, Randy, Georgia, Pam, Mary, Ellen, Lois, Lewis, and Elizabeth, Donald and Melania Trump, Ron Johnson, Chris Christie, and eight million people in the United States right now who struggle with this virulent virus. We pray for people in Wisconsin, the hot spot. We're famous. Help us to find ways to be compassionate and to find alternative ways to being together so that we can protect each other. We bring now, we name out loud or in the silence of our hearts, others who need your healing presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. God, you are full of forgiveness and compassion. You show us mercy every day. You gave us the creation to enjoy and to care for. You have given us this simple meal to remind us that we are all the same as we come to the table. You have given us this meal to assure us that the gifts of Jesus are gifts for us all. At this table, we realize that no one stands outside of your love. Help us to make this table a place of inclusion with gratitude. We remember the words of Jesus. On the night before he died, Jesus took bread. He blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples to eat. And he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples to drink, and he said, take and drink. This is my blood shed for you in the new covenant for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God, for the people of God, come, the table is ready. And share with your family if you need to.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. Thanks be to God. Amen.